Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab and today we're playing around with Synologies again. We've got a couple of our, our favorite guys out and some drives and of course the Eaton Frog for inspiration. And what we're looking at today is continuing through our series of uh, exploring the additional features, packages, software available through Synology to really make the most out of your NAS. So everyone knows you can store files here and you can dump your photos and your videos and whatever else you want there, but that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the capabilities of a NAS. And Synology has a virtual machine uh, plugin that we can install and go through, and we're gonna do some of that today. So what set it up for us? What do we have going on? So uh, we're using our normal uh, DS1621XX Plus, uh, although there's a lot of other models that support it. You'll have to come. Yeah, these guys, anything with a plus pretty much, there are some other ones that support it, but it does require a little bit of uh, compute and RAM resources. So Synology typically uh, has support for that at their higher end units. Yeah, and the CPUs have to support virtualization. So there's, there's a couple of bars to pass, but beyond that, uh, it really comes down to, do you have enough RAM in the system? A lot of the systems can support the amount of RAM uh, through add-ons, but obviously it's a bit nicer if your system has enough RAM to get a VM or two going without any changes. Right. Well, and that's a good point, too, because most Synologies are sold with a base of, what, four in, some, in something like this? We've four, seen two or four gigs. Four so or maybe eight. Uh, a lot of them support much more RAM, though, to, uh, to Kevin's point. So if you do want to get serious about using uh, virtualization on a Synology, if you're a service provider, if you're doing... Uh, some multi-tenant work uh, where you might want to have especially some of the advanced features if you're going to use this in production like migration of, uh, of vms across uh, synology units in a cluster multi clusters of a bunch of different types of synology units uh, those types of things you're going to want to show up prepared and in that in that case really is mostly just ram yeah so uh, we go dsm install the package and off we're running there's nothing else required here it's honestly that easy and just like a lot of their other packages, though, they've got free and premium tiers, right? Yeah, so this one, um, it's not a time lock. It's uh, free for all the basic features that honestly you'd want to leverage on a single solution. So if you're okay. if you're going to be using multiple NASes and getting an HE environment, you need a pro license for that. But for a home lab user, uh, the free license can do pretty much everything you'd want it to do, including uh, data production. Okay, yeah, the snap support and all that sort of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so it's actually pretty cool if you think about, again, talking about expanding the capabilities of these NASs, to your point as a home user or test dev or, or you're working on stuff or wanting to learn, you've got a server and storage right here. Now, it may not be as powerful as you know the latest PowerEdge or whatever. You, know, you can definitely do more. But you, the, the capabilities are, are pretty immense. Yeah, so if you're a, um, a home lab uh, guy, you're looking at uh, maybe buying a Nook or something along those lines, which is low power, not as fast to begin with. One of these NASs can pretty much be the equivalent uh, for, those, uh, for your needs without having to buy any additional hardware. It's going to have access to the storage natively. And you want to have another thing kind of making fan noise and uh, consuming power in the background. Yeah, well, that's true, too. A little bit less of a power leech than having multiple devices. Let's go ahead and take a look at DSM, though, um, and get into this. So if you're going to start out, where do we go? We go over to the uh, package center, and uh, you would search for uh, virtualization, so just vert. And you're going to see the uh, virtualization uh, or virtual machine manager uh, in there. And uh, here you just click install right now. It's open since we already have it installed in our system, right. but it's that easy. So what kind of resources, if we're thinking about how we have to slice up the resources available within the Synology, what is Virtual Machine Manager Eats? Do we get some visibility into that? So Virtual Machine Manager itself isn't gonna really use much. Uh, in our system, our RAM usage is 80% right now. Uh, but the way that breaks down, we have probably a gig used for system resources. Uh, we're also running uh, Docker for a, uh, a Unify controller, uh, so we limited that to uh, one gig, and uh, that left us with maybe five or so uh, for additional VM. And that's where, when you go into uh, Virtual Machine Manager, you said to be you said to be aware of what resources you're allocating, making sure you don't overextend yourself. Okay, so again, the RAM being the more likely resource you'll be short on uh, rather than compute. 
Yeah, so on this, uh, with the uh, XS Plus that we have, it included 8 gigs uh, by default. Uh, there have been other models that uh, include 8 gig default, uh, like a DS918, for example, mm-hmm. or DS918 Plus. Um, a lot of the other models that might uh, just ship with uh, 4 gig of memory, it's probably a little bit too, uh, not enough for uh, what you want for okay. like a Windows or anything beyond a really minimal um, Linux uh, VM. Right, and they do support a wide variety of Windows, Linux builds, and, and a couple other things. It's several logos I didn't recognize. Yeah. <laughs> so so there's, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of options, and it just comes down to how much you want to put into the NAS in terms of investment. The additional DRAM does cost more than what you'd find right. for additional servers, but... Uh, Around the 8 gig mark, uh, you can do a lot with it. Okay, let's get back into our current build then. So uh, here we can see the overview of uh, what's running the system. Our uh, NAS has kept the name SR Rack ever since it was a rack station. It's currently a 6 bay unit, it's a little bit uh, overselling itself, but it still keeps the name. It's confidence, well. I like it. Well, what's great is. Um, We've kept the same drives or um, migrated from drive to drive over, I think, three or four systems now. Mm-hmm. And it's just been move the drives over to another system, migrate, and you're done. Right. So here uh, we can see our VM that's already created. Uh, but it's really easy to get this going. You select your operating system to uh, start with. Uh, you can also create another uh, DSM instance if you want to. Um, Wait, DSM within the DSM? Yes. That sounds scary. Uh, you select the storage. In this case, uh, we have uh, some hard drives of bulk storage, some SSDs for uh, some faster storage. And give it a name. And uh, allocate uh, some CPUs to it. Uh, in this case, we're seeing eight CPUs, but it's a four core, four thread system, so eight vCPUs. Um, memory allocated to it, uh, one gig or whatever you want onto it. This is just mm-hmm. going to be a quick example. Um, Virtual disk, define the size you're going to use, and you can add in multiples to this or change the uh, controller type, uh, which can be uh, uh, preferential depending on the uh, storage or depending on the OS. Okay. Um, move on to next, the default network. Uh, in this case, we have our lab and management network, and you can also add additional uh, network cards into it in case you want, uh, for example, RVM sees both networks. Um, and then here, you select the um, uh, the ISO that you want for uh, boot up. Uh, so this would be the installer guy. So in here. So now you're just navigating to one of the folders on the system itself, right? Yeah. And then uh, there's also guest tools. So there are certain things that won't work until drivers are installed. This is so um, when it boots up in a Windows environment, you get the NIC and other items in there. Okay. Uh, auto start if it turns on. Uh, if the system turns off, uh, it turns back on. Do you want the VM to power back on? The BIOS, you can do legacy or uh, UFI. Keyboard layout, uh, default USB controller, and uh, USB device if you want one of those uh, added in. And then you can select uh, different users that you want to have access into it or local groups. Okay. And from here, you click apply and it builds the uh, VM. Now, what is it when it builds the VM? What exactly, what state is it in now? I mean, it hasn't installed Windows that fast, has it? No, this is just going to be like you created, and all of a sudden you have a desktop sitting on your uh, desk, ready and waiting. For now it's ready to go do the hard work. Yeah, and this would be a thing where uh, you can change its uh, uh, boot order. So if you wanted to make sure that it was. Uh, uh, booting from the optical disk or virtual disk first, you can change that boot order, but it really comes down to um, getting that uh, uh, the OS installed. And so what have you done with the Windows VM? What's uh, your use case, or are you just messing around? So our use case is more of a kind of a last uh, man or last person standing uh, VM where if we're going through um, a test dev in our own lab where we need to power down certain systems, it's nice to be able to power down multiple stages of the lab and still have a VM that uh, that can access uh, the UPSs or different switches uh, when all the other infrastructure is turned off. So those fun days when we're sitting here and all the power goes out and then you start panicking about how to maintain and shut down safely and this will be your last guy and the last battery? Well, this the nice thing with this is the uh, Synology sits on our core rack, which has about six or seven hours of uh, runtime. And it's literally the NAS, a switch, 
and uh, I think it also powers our uh, incoming fiber connection. So right. there's not a lot for it on there, and but without having to add an additional system, it's the thing that's already on. It's not really going to use additional. Uh, it's not going to make it draw more power while it's being used. So it just it gives me something that uh, if we need to, we can log into it if the time uh, requires. Okay. Well, let's go back to the, the Windows VM since that one's in pretty good shape and, and see what that looks like. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's alive. Yeah. So you get uh, key, the um, uh, KVM access into it. Uh, you can just connect onto it and it pops up as a, a Windows tab. Okay. And one thing I did find kind of fun was uh, the performance inside the NAS is pretty nice. So, Wait, so you're running Crystal Disk Mark inside a VM inside DSM. Yes. It seems... So, crazy so this is where things kind of come down to why you might want faster storage inside a nas than what you might be able to leverage externally from it um would you did you make a flash volume for this i assume uh it's sitting on the ssd volume okay so right now it's creating a little test file and uh, we'll go through uh the different sequential and uh random uh, read and write workloads okay so while this takes a minute what other Oh, it's starting to go already. But what what other visibility into the VM do you have back in, in DSM? And we'll pop back and see the, the so, results. So while well, that's running, you actually yeah, get this. Yeah, there we go. You're, yeah, you now see, we're seeing the CPU pop a little bit. Yeah, you get a pretty good access into uh, disk throughput and uh, bandwidth, uh, host I.O. percentage. Like there's a lot of good stats in here. And as you can see right now, we're using like 15% on the uh, uh, VM. The overall system impact is not really that bad. So when we drill into uh, the overall system resources for the NAS itself, um, we see the CPU lit higher, uh, volume uh, primarily because it's reading that SSD volume. But if we drill into the disks themselves, we're only hitting the SSD volume. We're not really we're not tasking our bulk storage. Mm -hmm. So you could have other users in your work group hitting this for file shares. And what you're doing to the VM is not hurting this in the slightest. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat. All right, you want to go back and see uh, if CDM progressed? Okay, it's still working through. But a thousand megabytes per second on a little VM like that's pretty slick. Yeah, so it's it's pretty fun how well this uh, how well this VM can operate, and that's where it's kind of cool. We I, previous to this I was using a uh, an old HP uh, thin client. With little, I think it was a 32 gig um, uh, M.2 SATA device, and it was small enough that I could barely install anything on it. It mm -hmm. worked; uh, it was nice from that perspective, but it was really limited. This, I'm doing the same thing with it. I can remote into it the same way I was doing before, and it's faster. and you already had it sitting down there in the first place. Yes, so it, it was pretty nice. <laughs> so we're running um, just to fully understand what this NAS is doing. It's running our surveillance station. Yes. It's running a Docker container for Unify controller. Yes, for access points. Right. And now it's running this little test VM for your, your last VM standing. Yeah. In addition to all the file shares. Yeah. So it, it's doing a lot and it really doesn't care. So that's an interesting thing, I think. And I'll, I'll flip back here for a second so we can see some of these results start to populate. But one of the interesting things about NAS capabilities in general is that when you take advantage of all of the stuff available, the cost per you know, usable bit of enjoyment or whatever the metric is goes way down. Yeah, so on these types of systems, especially if you're looking at a the total investment cost, right. you already bought the NAS, you are looking to expand, you're looking to run some VMs. For most people, uh, without virtualization in play, you can't really install that VM on something. I mean, you could reinstall it uh, on your desktop and have it as a uh, guest VM using certain software, but installing test dev stuff, it, becomes a lot easier when you have a platform that can run virtualization on really unlimited resources. And it's another reason to invest a little bit in Flash too, just to have that little extra kick when you need it. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to take a look, what, at some of the snapshot protection settings? So this is where I think it's kind of cool. You have a um, platform that has relatively no cost for the uh, free version of um, the Virtual Machine Manager, and you can create a snapshot plan for uh, your VM. In this case, uh, I think I'm doing, um, uh, I think it's a couple per an hour and then uh, per day and I think a couple per week on the recovery side. But one thing that's really nice with it is, uh, let me go in to edit this guy. So we're doing the dailies, the retention. 
the part I really like uh, that I've even seen missing from the uh, certain enterprise uh, backup solutions is you get these policies like, okay, one day RPO or one hour RPO, what does that mean? Um, this gives you a nice graphical layout visual, exactly yeah. of, of what that uh, is going to mean uh, for it. In this case, um, you get to see what it's keeping, what it's uh, how long it'll be keeping it for. Um, and for those that don't play the snap game a lot, RPO recovery point objectives. So uh, that's uh, that's the an, an acronym acronym yeah. acronym. Yes. yes. So yeah, but the, it's a neat visual to show you when those things are going to take place. Yeah, and you can uh, the re the replication destination. This is an area they would come in with um, uh, the pro license. Uh, and Do we know what the pro license costs? By the way, I've not looked it up yet, uh, but. We could probably look it up pretty quickly. <laughs> and fill that in. Okay. Yeah. So it's, unless you're leveraging multiple NASes, which for a home user, you're probably not going to be going into that realm. But for a um, uh, a small environment, it's probably not going to be that bad of a uh, entry cost, I hope. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Did the uh, benchmark finish? I'm just curious to see where that... Okay. Yeah, and actually, uh, let's see if we can hover over to see what the uh, IOPS are. Um, ah, maybe not. Ah, okay. So on the uh, random 4K, uh, this guy was able to get around uh, 20,000 IOPS for uh, 4K random read and write, which, I mean, this is just on common SATA drives. It's just a VM running in the background of a NAS doing other things, and it performs incredibly well. Yeah, and it uh, again just the flexibility that you get out of a system that you may already have is uh, is is pretty slick, I think. Yeah, and overall the uh, speed of the um, uh, VM is pretty nice, and obviously the the speed of the uh, VM through these uh, through this little KVM session is not the best. It's right. you're going to want a remote desktop into it, um, but it, it's it's fantastic. It's snappy. It works just the way you'd want it to work. So before anyone asks on uh, the comments, could you do a Minecraft server through this thing if you wanted to? Yeah, if you had enough RAM, uh, you probably gonna want to use a um, uh, Linux uh, guest OS for that, just to be uh, less resource intensive, and then you also wouldn't have to worry about a Windows license. Right. Uh, but Ubuntu or CentOS or something like that would be uh, probably the perfect fit for it. Okay. Well, I mean, there's not. It's funny because just like a lot of other Synology things, there's not a lot to it, but it's a tremendous value add. So we've looked at a lot of these other features. We looked at uh, replicating snapshots, free, easy, ready to go. Yeah. Uh, virtual machine manager, free for the base version, easy, ready to go. There's so much stuff like that when you look at these packaged NAS solutions like Synology uh, that just drive so much more value out of the system. Uh, to Kevin's point, you are going to eat some CPU. You're going to definitely eat some RAM with the Virtual Machine Manager. So you just have to know that going in and understand what your use case is. Can you get away with a lighter OS uh, like Linux rather than Windows to save a little there? Do you need to spend a little bit more to get more uh, DRAM in the system so you can have some more VMs if that's something that's interesting to you? Um, all the Synologies can be upgraded, all the plus ones anyway, can be upgraded later with more RAM, right? Uh I want to say yes, but I really want to say defer to your spec sheet. Right. So most of them, I think, have a second slot, though. So it's relatively easy to to drop another uh, unit in there and, and get more RAM capacity if you need. Uh, you're a big fan, though? Yeah, it works very well. I mean, we run a lot of Hyper-V and uh, E6i in the lab, and this thing, it, it works great for its use case. All right. So there you have it. Check out uh, Virtual Machine Manager if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching the video.